Welcome to Saw Logs Plastic Hubs. This is Jim Deadman, and i am just got today's video together for you. So I hope you enjoy what we're doing here in the shop. So pull your chair up virtually beside the computer, your television, whatever you watch these videos on. Sit back and enjoy the video. Greetings, this is Jim, and welcome to my shop. Uh, today, we got a little project. Uh, you're going to see Michael a little bit in his hands and stuff. Michael Hale, everybody knows Michael Hale, a friend of ours. His little smitty had an accident. And uh, he he contacted me and Tom, and I jumped on it for Mr. Tom did. So he was down here, and he had a little family emergency and left. Uh, he was going to make a rare camera appearance. Uh, Michael's actually talking about doing a channel sometime soon so here is his part this is the uh part for michael smitty it goes in his tail stock and this was the other uh we made this out of steel because it was handy so uh, come along on the journey and i hope you enjoy the video today of michael smitty tail stock parts enjoy i want to see michael's hands today we're over here working for him today <laughs> Michael going to show his face today. He's talking about getting brave and making movies. So <laughs> it, we're, he's brought a piece down here for Smitty, and we're going to have some fun today in the shop. And uh, Michael, say hey. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, you'll get to see his face on and off today besides his hands. We, he says he's getting on camera shy on us. So. <laughs> As Harold says, all projects start on the bandsaw. Hand me your piece over there, Michael. <laughs> This is the piece off of Michael Smitty, if you'll see. I got it in my hand. And this is what we're fixing to make. So we're going to make it out of round and mill it down because the turning is going to be easier. Now, we're not going to bore you with a bunch of, a bunch of sawing. It's just setting up and getting ready. As I, I think you got better things in life to do than sit there and watch that bandsaw run for 15 minutes. <laughs> it's going to take a while to cut that. By the way, this is 8620s. Um, good old, I don't know where eat this ready to go. He'll take care of it. So it'll work. So there we go. Now you get to. Let's start cutting some metal this morning. Let's see what we got here. Helps turn the lathe on. Uh, we're going to face, what I'm going to do is face each end off and turn it. Because we're going to carve this out, this piece of two and a little over. Let's see how we do this morning. See what it, I'm not going to turn the cool mist on until I start whacking on the ODs. And I got a lot of whacking on the OD now. So. There you go, nice facing action. This 8620 face is really, really good, and it's some really good stuff. A little rusty on the outside, but there ain't going to be none of that left when we get done the machining on this, because the sample parts here, we're going to basically turn a good bit of it out. So it's going to be a lot of passes when we start turning. What I'm going to do is face this thing to limp, so I'll bring you back in just a minute. We got a lot. I told. I told the saw operator to cut it a little thicker because I wasn't sure how straight the saw was going to be today. The saw was pretty straight today, so. but this is size, so we're right now we're just facing the lint. There's going to be a lot of passes involved, so I'm not going to, we're not again going to bore you with a bunch of machining passes. Running about 360, I'm not sure what my feed rate, somewhere around 8 or 10 dial per rail. 8620 is pretty beefy stuff, and you really on these little lathes, you gotta take some. You got too greedy right there, but I'm saying you can't take a lot off of 8620. It ain't 1018 and it ain't piece of aluminum. And you can't take much, it's just gonna take a little while. This ain't, this ain't nobody tall, big old monarch. Take that sucker and roll it in there and get it. 
Alright, we'll bring you back. Alright, we we kind of went back and redone our setup. And this is going to be another slow process of get the cool mist running. You gotta run it. You're going to cut this on heavy stuff. I don't like taking it. And I, tell, I guess I won't have to take a Saturday night bath, will I? All right, let's see what happens here. Looks like we're going to have to go down a gear, folks. It's so 8620, some mean stuff. Put some more gear to it. Yep, that's what it needed, a little different gear there. The two were cutting the scale off the outside. So, many passes later, we will be back. I'll bring you back when we get down to the bottom. I'll bring you in for a couple of cuts right quick. Well, Michael's standing over there keeping his eye on me, keeping me out of trouble, I guess, today. Folks, besides you and the camera, you know, it's unusual for me to have a guest in the shop to talk to. So most of the time, I'm talking to you while I'm working and making these videos. We may have a special guest this afternoon if we don't get this bait before he gets here. Our good friend Tom, he's not a morning person. He'll tell you real quick he's not, you know. What he did for his career, he, he tended to work late. Well, old habits are hard to break. Myself, I, was, I worked day shift for probably 35 of my 40 years of eating or so, maybe, maybe 30 of them. I, I took a couple of spells working off shifts. I spent five years one time on night, so I know how to mess you up. Right, I'm gonna do a couple passes and Michael and I was just talking some general machine. And uh, one of the things I was telling him, you know, this is one of the tools I've cut down. A lot of the message boards and a lot of these other channels, you'll see a lot of guys at home use car or use high speed steel. And they talk a lot about, well, the machines are not fast enough. Well, that's true, but what they're really, what they're going by is what the carbide manufacturer will tell you. In this case, yes, I'm not running the surface footage at insert design for, but it's also working just fine. With my Grizzly, we're taking about 40,000 cuts here to rough this down. And I just picked it back up to 320, so... You know, this stuff works. These tools work. It's just that the purest... I come out of environments, as I was telling Michael, we used inserts. And when I first went to the shop, we used to uh, cemented solid carbide was a ground them. I've never even seen much. The only thing we ever used high speed steel for was four hoops. So we are liking about 40 thousandths. So I'm going to take about 25 here in the finishing cut and see what we get close to the OB. See what we got right there, and um, see if we're close. We got to be about 590s, what it, the old part might. And we're at 596. So let's set the zero.
Use my little poor man's DRO there. And you notice I'm back turning too. And the reason I'm back turning is that way I have no tool pressure, no marks, and I have a true reading here. Now let's see what we got. Michael's sitting here checking me out. He's keeping an eye on to keep me straight today. I'm a half a thousand smaller than the other one. Right dead on it. He ain't gonna beat that with the stick, fellas. Peachy. Peachy cleaning. Now all we want to do now is we'll The size camper. I'm just gonna file a camper in the eye. Another thing about this 8620, it makes a pretty darn good finish right there. I missed my mouth. Oh, my finish is looking really good. Now you look at that finish, Michael, as you think. Now this is the last facing pass. I purposely left it a little thick so I could come in. So I, I roughed all the rough down. This is a little 5,000 pass to get her down there. Then I'm going to work the bottom in there and blend in the, the radius. Then all the lathe work is done. And then we get to make the square piece out of the round piece. So. It was just easier to, for me to make the square piece out of the round piece than to try to make a to put the round piece of a, in a rectangular. Okay. Okay, I think that'll do right there. Let's check the depth to make sure while I got the camera on. So it should be right around a half inch. And the old one was right around a half inch. And we'll cut this off a second. I'll check. Okay, and there it is, ready to be made two flats out of. So I went ahead and cut a little radius relief in here because the radius of the tools I was using is a little bit stiffer. So, and I'm not worried about the OD because we're going to make some flats out of it anyway. So, now we're going to sit down and figure out what we need to do next. We've got it marked. It kind of went to Sronsis. We're going to put it in the saw fixture on the flat saw and saw one side. We may try to saw both with it. We'll see we set up. There we go. Now what we've done is using the saw fixture with the vertical because it's a lot easier than than, than using the horizontal. We'll clamp the other side up and do it the same way. We can sort of close to her layout lines. We're not trying to get on the layout lines. All we're trying to do is get a reference. So, so we, you know, and we're far enough back we can mill down to what we need to be. So what I'm going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the other one as closely as we can. And that'll be the best way to do it. Now we're cutting the other side out. And you might ask why I'm not using vertical. Well, I want these pretty straight, no wiggles in them, but we're going to actually use one as a rough reference when we go to milling. So, and we're going to mill this way, we're going to mill it to size. 
We would have done the same thing if we used a square piece of stock. We'd have probably milled the stock down the sides first before we turned it. But the, the point is, this is made out of a cast so it wasn't perfect to begin with. This will be a lot squarer when it's done. Okay, one of the we're starting the process. Now, I allowed lots of stock to be wasted off. And the reason behind that is, uh, we got a set of reference on one side and this square on the other. And basically what we're going to do is mill this one side down to where this is uneven because this is a casting. So uh, Michael had to leave. He had a family emergency. So what I'm going to do is mill this side down to where this step is basically the same as this. And then we're going to flip it over and mill it to size. That way we'll have it square. That's the biggest thing about doing what we did instead of using a piece of stock to make it out of. So we're going to start by milling. We're not going to take big cuts. We're not holding this lot. I'm only going to take 20, 30 thousandths at a time and mill it down that way. And that's my three-quarter end mill running about oh, six, so about 700 RPM or so with it. We're not pushing it, so we're going to get her done. Things I'm going to bring up, and, and this is a, a complaint or slam or a, it's just a comment. Uh, Maya, you know, if you've been into my shop and you've seen my shop and you've seen my videos, you know my shop is small. And you know that I have a, a Grizzly over here, which is a single phase machine. This mill is a three-phase machine that I bought. It's an industrial machine. And uh, I'm using a, a static phase converter because it was as inexpensive as it works. I've never had a minute's trouble out of it. It's worked fine, excuse me, for kicking the camera there. And you'll notice, you know, now, uh, do I push the machine as hard as it would be in a machine shop? I probably don't. But, you know, I looked at several different options and I just decided that's the best for me with the, the static. And I've never had a minute's trouble out of it. And you hear all these people talk about statics and, and on and on and on. And I'm not saying that the rotary people don't make good products. If I had a bigger shop and had more three-phase machines, I'd probably go with a rotary myself if, if I couldn't get three-phase power. Actually, where I live, I could probably get three-phase power because it's out in the road. I, if I had a building built, then there's a lot of coding and stuff involved in that. But as you can see, I, I get a lot done with my mill, and it works just fine. And I'm not insulting other creators, and, you know, and I'm not saying it's got anything to do with the one of the rotary phase converter companies giving them some channel sponsorship or anything like that. It's just that this is my real world experience and you see my mill running a lot in my videos. So uh, I'm not saying that, that, that they're not good products. I'm just saying you can use a phase converter and a static and it does work. And this is the last pass of the second side. We're taking about eight thousandths off to get it down to the finished size that we're looking for. And this is a casting, so it wasn't exact. And so this is our finished material that we've got and uh, we've been milling on and, uh, we still got some more operations obviously and I was thinking while I was doing this off camera there might be some questions why not why we're using steel and the grade and all that well part of it's just what I had to make it out of and the other thing is, I mean, that's the biggest thing. It's just what we had available uh, to make it out of. Uh, and Michael actually brought a piece of 1018, which would have been just fine too. But 
uh, this machines are actually gives better finishes. So uh, Durabar, you know, if you really want to be a tur tourist to make it out of cast, we could have probably called Metal Supermarket to have them cut a piece of Durabar for us. But uh, I'm gonna check the size on that, and we'll be right back. Here we go, now we'll get it. Tried three different methodologies here. I'll just use this cart in this tent to keep the outside sort of straight. I hadn't sawed much metal, showed sawing much steel on my band saw. I set it up. It's usually been real thin stuff, so this is a good chance to show you what it does. How well it works is some difficult material. And this is some pretty tough alloy right here. Just get the other side off camera. And now it's, that's the block left out. And now we got to figure out how to drill it. The thing that's concerned me is this hole's not in the center of the block. And I would center it up, but Michael and I talked about this, and I'm going to actually set this thing up in, in the vise like this, and then I'm gonna put the other fixture in, and I'm gonna put this hole in just like Smitty did, because that way I know it's gonna work. Like I said, I'm lined this up with the old part. I didn't, I, I'm not trying to center it, I'm trying to copy the existing part. I don't, so I'm not trying to shoot for center like you would normally, you do a normal machining. I just sort of lined it up and centered it to where the old part was and got a good deep center drill. And, you know, recently I got me some metric drills. This is a metric hole. So, this is a Travers come through again. We're going to drill it out with an 8.5 millimeter drill to tap it out to the proper tap size. I don't have a metric drill chart, but I have Siri. Siri told me. So that's handy. So, we're going to drill this thing out. And we're going to Get her ready for it. Like I said, this is, these are import drills from Travers. Uh, that's fancy. Had them on sale. And usually Travers has some pretty good import stuff. So. Like I said, what I did was actually put the tap in, line the original block up to the back of the vise, the thick side of the vise, set a stop, lined everything up, just floated in there, stopped on the machine surface, and then I'm going in and machining the surface some more. Now it's went in. Since this is a casting, and I guess they just had fixtures to stick this stuff in. And how they machined it, I'm not sure. Did you see how we made one out of some, a replacement part? 
here in the, in, 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 here in the hub shop. So, uh, I haven't heard back from Michael about his stepson. I told him I'd finish this up today and I'd put it in the mail. It's just one of them things. I'm going to just, now this is not a machine tap. I'm going to start this and I'm going to hand tap when I get real through. I ain't loose my phone this big. Hey guys, we're over here on the bench and we got the tap in. So now we get the hand tap it. And again, my old craftsman set gives you and actually it gives you a size to use like a standard drill for. And this is just a, this is a Sears uh, craftsman set. It's about 20 years old. Realized sometime I needed. I, I, I have a few good. Well, I'm gonna say I'm not gonna say these are bad taps. I have some better quality metrics, but I just buy them alone. And this project came along, and I realized I had it after he said it. Cause some sizes I do and I don't. And I did say this size is one of the thin. So, we'll just hand tap this fool right on through. Excuse me just a second, please. And we'll just, we'll just put a little bit of more gojo juice down in here. That's what I use my little bench bottle for, for stuff like this too. I know I started it on the mill, so I know it's going to be straight. And then I can just get it over here and run this tap down. And the other reason this is so long, I'm going to have to run the tap completely through it. So it's going to be a little while. I'll bring you back. You don't need to see me twisting. Oops, excuse me. Twisting on the tap a little bit. I just knocked myself off. All fair, so excuse me. Well, there she is. This is this is my my version. And well, I just throwed the other piece down, but that's my replacement there. So hopefully, I get to see all this. Hopefully, Michael will be happy. I'll text him and shoot him the pictures here in just a minute. Probably get this in the mail to him asap, and hopefully, maybe by this afternoon, he can have it in a couple. He can have it. That's today's video of the project that I did. Hope you enjoyed that video. Please remember, this is a copyrighted production of James Deadman Sawlogs Plastic Hubs for your enjoyment here on YouTube. Also, you know, if you haven't already, please subscribe. It doesn't cost a thing to subscribe. And while you're at it, if you have other friends that like to watch machine videos or an old guy out playing in the shop, how about jumping in and tell them, hey, come over to the channel and give us a try. I really would appreciate it. Again, thanks for watching the videos. Thanks for the ones who comment. They're always welcome. And again, we will see you in the next video. Have a great day. And like I say, thanks for watching again.